All right, so over here at the uh, Matco Wheels and Brakes uh, booth at Oshkosh, many of us, many, many of us are already either flying behind or building an aircraft with these uh, products. And there's a question that comes up a lot, and I know I have a question on how to properly adjust the torque or tension on the nuts that uh, you install for the wheel and brake. So today we're gonna talk to George about that very question to get that answered, and also a little bit about what is new with Matco. Hi, George Happ with Matco Aircraft Landing Systems. Brian's nice enough to stop by our booth today to take a look at our product line. This particular question is about setting the preload on the tapered roller bearing. So I'm gonna use an MHE6B as an example here. It's a pretty popular wheel out there in the light sport world, but the principles we're gonna show apply to any of our tapered roller bearings. So in our technical manuals and bulletins, there's a note there about setting the preload on a tapered roller bearing. I'm gonna ask Brian to get in here close, and I've got it so that it's not set properly right now. And if you watch, the seal on the bearing is rotating with the wheel. So this rubber piece just outside the flange is rotating with the wheel. To set the preload, you merely have to put enough pressure on there so that as you rotate the wheel, the seal doesn't rotate any longer. And you can see that's happened right there. So now the preload is proper, the wheel is rotating, the seal is sta staying stationary. Put the cotter pin in and you're done. It's a little bit of a judgment call. Do I go to the next locking feature or the prior locking feature? The important thing is when you're on the ground, just double check it and make sure when the wheel's rotating, the seal is staying stationary. Okay, so now people, if you could kind of show us the behind the scenes of what's happening. So the, the, the people, the people are asking, so what is that doing? So here is my handy multi, uh, large size tapered roller bearing. When you're watching, that seal is fixed to the ID portion of the tapered roller bearing. And when it's rotating and you're seeing the steel going, the whole seal is actually rotating on the axle. And you need enough preload on that so that this stops rotating and the rollers are doing the work. So in a tapered roller bearing, there's a race pressed into the wheel and the tapered roller bearing fits into it. Without the preload, you're not properly loading the bearing. You want to make sure that all the rollers are seated and the way you tell if there's enough preload on it is that that part starts, stops turning and the rollers are doing the work. You should be able to see the rollers moving in there as we go. So there's always, I always get the question asked, hey, shouldn't I use a sealed ball bearing? I've got one on my car and they go 100,000 miles without any service. Number one, on your wheel, you want to be able to disassemble this and inspect the condition inside. In a sealed ball bearing, your first indication of trouble is when it fails. Secondly, oh, I've got, I go 100,000 miles in my car and I never had a problem with the tapered roller bearing. Let me know the next time you take your car from zero to 70 miles an hour in a tenth of a second. That's, the ball bearings do not like to be clanged against each other and that's what's happening on spin up on a landing with a ball bearing wheel. Brian's asking about the transition from uh, Matco Manufacturing to Matco ALS. In November, I'm sorry, in December of 2022, we were acquired by NMG Aerospace, a large aerospace company out of Stowe, Ohio. And we've been working together now for 18 months, and our first collaboration is on a change in, a significant change in our disc materials. We're going to two new materials, one's called UltraWare, and in the UltraWare brand, uh, we do electroless nickel plating. Of course, the, it's a, just a flash coating for corrosion protection, so you'll lose it on the friction surface early. But it gives it a, a, a visual difference from a DuraWare, which is the standard. Both of these are higher carbon steel uh, brakes. They represent our longest wearing. Uh, this is kind of... Uh, uh, in conjunction with what they produce currently on a wide range of larger brake systems. So the, the ultra wear will represent our highest wearing disc, but it's also optimized for a new lining that we're coming out with. You can come over this way. So the standard lining that's out there in the industry mostly is a semi-metallic lining. That's what's shown here. The new lining is a sintered lining. Both of these lines have gone through uh, about 45 rejected takeoff stops, and you can see the wear debris that's built up on this disc. One of the side benefits that we weren't looking for, but it's nice to have, the sintered lining runs extremely clean. But the nicest thing with the sintered lining is the way the friction performance is at high temperatures. Uh, this will hold its friction performance well up past the design region that we set for the semi-metallic. So in the same brake configuration, configuration, you're going to have a higher safety margin for that high energy stop, the RTO, the rejected takeoff. 
You could also take advantage of it to raise the rating of the brake, but you're going to be doing that by running the brake hotter. So at the current time, we don't anticipate changing the energy rating, but there'll be a significant safety margin in real life uh, for the pilot. All right, I'm gonna pop in here real quick to talk about our sponsors. As you know, I can't do this all on my own. We got to have somebody to help fuel that truck. We try really hard to work with uh, sponsors that provide a good service and a good quality product. So let's talk about those guys right now. Dynon Avionics at Dynon.com, the premier provider of glass panel avionics systems for experimental and light sport aircraft. And visit our website at experimentalaircraftchannel.com for new videos and easy to navigate playlists and so much more. Speaking of fueling that truck, if you guys wanna join us on our Patreon page, become patrons of this channel, just search on Patreon for Experimental Aircraft Channel, sign up at several different levels, so check that out. So this represents our first collaboration, but it doesn't represent everything that's anticipated. Um, as you, you may know, NMG Aerospace participates in a lot of wheel and brakes on certified aircraft. They're actually going through a TSO on a larger system that's going on a vertical takeoff uh, horizontal landing vehicle at the time. And it's anticipated that uh, we'll venture into the certified world as well very soon. Thanks, George, for that technical demonstration and overview of MATCO. And for those of you who are new to the aircraft building industry, here are some examples of the aircraft parts MATCO has to offer you. Thanks for watching today and supporting aviation with us.